Israel. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness, or anything that is in the heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow thy myself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visit thee the iniquities of the fathers upon the children on the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and show mercy unto the thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God name in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maid servant, thy man servant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger within thy gate. For in the six days the Lord made the heaven and earth and the sea, and all that in them is and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that the day may belong upon the land which the Lord thy God give thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor. In the Lord God, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. First and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel, which is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Of our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I'd like to say Shabbat Shalom, Happy Sabbath. All that. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, we're going to, today we're going to give you the title is Black History According to the Bible. And we're dealing with color today. Black History According to the Bible. And we're dealing with color. It should be, it shouldn't be uh, a black history. Because the history we got in this book that people don't look at is a history that is for the whole world. And what? He only gave it to a, a black nation that has dark skin, that has light skin, but they black. You know what I'm saying? I ain't trying to say all oh, these lights and dark skin. You know what I'm saying? And we got many colors. But he gave this knowledge to our people to spread to the world. And they have given us their history of what they say is black history. No disrespect to Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, or Farrakhan, Elijah Muhammad, and all that stuff. But that history won't save you. It won't save you. The history that we need is coming out of this book that will save us. And these, what these leaders have done, they have shut up the kingdom of God from everybody upon the world because Satan has deceived the whole world. And they don't give you the history of this book because this is not a religious book. This is a history book that was written to a set of people that's supposed to lead all nations to salvation. But they got lost into slavery. But he said, I'll be a little sanctuary to you and your enemies' land. And that'll be what we are trying to do now, be that little sanctuary to keep this truth going. Because there's only going to be a few people that get it. It's not going to be a large number. But we're going to deal with color today. Color. But I'm going to start in Matthew chapter 23 and 13 first. I just want to show a scripture right here. This is a real rich history. Our people got a rich history in this world. Very rich. When I mean our people, I'm talking about the people of Israel. And our God name is Israel too. <laughs> you got many names. So I'm just show you what these Pharisees, these false prophets are doing. When they don't teach you the history of the Bible. And we're going to deal with color today because we need to know who the Israelites are by color. Because we got a nation that, are, that, that 
are saying that they are us. We're going to try to match them up. And it's going to be followed by two or three part series to this. So, but I want to turn to Matthew chapter 23 and verse 13 and read this one scripture. Go ahead. <clears throat> but woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, for you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you need to get, go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. He said, one and two, the scribes and Pharisees, those are the ones that's supposed to give this law. Teach. Israel is supposed to teach. But they have shut up the kingdom of heaven and not telling us what our job is. And not telling us the instructions of the job. All they say, you come to church and just have a good time. And, th and just cover everybody's stuff. That's not what this is about. This is trying to get us salvation. And this, we just did it with color today so we can break down who the Israelites are because they have the oracles of God. The answers. So we're going to turn to Psalms 147. Because when I tell people that if you don't have, if you don't know who Israel is, you don't have salvation. Because they are the ones that are going to teach you how to get salvation. And God only dealt with one set of people. One set. God gave salvation, gave his salvation plan to one set of people. That's Israel. But if we don't know who they are, we can't identify them. We'll send all our money to over there in Jerusalem today to them Jewish people. Mm -hmm. That's who they say who that's who they say that's Israel. They're not Israel. Period. They're not. And I'm going to show you they're not Israel. Let's look at this. Psalm 147, verse 19. Go ahead, brother. He showed his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. Yes, sir. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, mm -hmm. they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. You see what he said? As of God's judgment, they have not known them. Because Israel has got to give you the judgment. They got to give you the answer. They got to give you everything according to the book because he gave it to one nation to, to teach all nations. He said, I ain't dealt with no other nation. No other nation but Israel. But if we don't know who Israel is, how can we get the answer to salvation? How can we get salvation? You finish with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 3, excuse me. Let's look at it again about Israel. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. It's very important to know who the Israelites are or the real Jews. And this stuff, a little small thing like color will throw people off. They got a white man in everybody's house right now saying he's Jesus. Don't nobody question it at all. Don't nobody question it at all. White man up been up in my house and when I was a little boy. Right. On the wall. Mm -hmm. And it does, it's not the description in the book. Romans chapter 3 and verse 1. Color. It's very important. Israel got to teach this. Let's see how important it is that you know who the Israelites are. Go ahead. What advantage then have the Jew? Or what profit is there of circumcision? Go ahead. Much every way. Chiefly, because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. So if you don't know who the Israelites are, you don't know the answer. Oracles mean answer of who? Of God. God. He gave it to us. That's why it sounds so weird for us to keep talking about the dietary law. Keep talking about the Sabbath day. Don't eat that catfish. Don't eat that swine. People today say, man, they ain't got nothing to do with salvation. All you got to do is love. That's love, brothers and sisters. When you got an answer to that sound, when you got an answer to sin. Because believe it or not, Jesus don't want to know what your menu is when he ain't deserved. Isaiah chapter 66 tells us that. He said, much chiefly, it's an advantage. If I got an advantage, that means that I'm the most powerful player on the board. Israel had the advantage. Go ahead. Verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Should their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Mm. God forbid. 
Yeah, let God be true, but every man a liar. Yes, sir. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. See what he said right there? Mm. I don't care if nobody don't believe in the book. You believe. I believe. You got to make sure that you don't follow people just because they blood, just because they friendly. You better follow people that know this, know this book and get you salvation because hell is hot. And it don't have no time on it in getting out of it. Mm -hmm. That's what we got to see. Very important. I just try to show you who the Israelites are by color and show you how important it is for us to know this. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2. Jesus warned us that it's going to, it was going to be people who said that they are us. He told us they lied us. We're going to get to the color part. Just want to lay a little foundation. Black history according to the Bible. We're dealing with color today. But we got a set of people in the land today saying that they are us. They do not match up with these curses at all. Or the color of this book. And Jesus is going to tell you they're lying. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Go ahead. Hey, excuse me. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Jesus is saying this now. It's written in red. Go ahead. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Wait a minute. Let's do a process of elimination. Mm. Who's saying they're Jews today? Mm. It ain't us. The black skin people, it ain't us. Jesus called their church the synagogue of Satan. That was Satan's sins. We ain't saying we Jew. We don't even know what tribe we from. So we got to make sure we follow what Christ said. He said, they are of the synagogue of Satan. Let's look at it again. Revelation 3. Same book. 3 and 7. This is very important to know who the Israelites are. Or the real Jews. Revelation chapter 3 and verse 7. Go ahead. And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things said he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Man, that's a powerful man, though. Powerful. He opened no man <clears throat> shut. That Jesus right there. Go ahead. Verse 8. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. A lot of people denying this name right now. I had a brother tell me, he said, man, I thought the name was supposed to be Yahweh in this. I said, brother, whatever language Jesus' name in, you speak it. We speak English. Those people over there in Jerusalem, they can say Yahshua and all that stuff. But we speak English. Don't deny me his name. Jesus said, brother, he said, many shall come in my name and deceive many. And that name is deceiving a lot of people right now. Well, listen to what he said right here about these Jews. Go ahead. Verse 9. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. See what he said? He said, I'm going to make them liars come and worship before your feet, Israel. They are the synagogue of Satan. I'm going to make them come. They're going to know who you are. They're going to be saying, golly, they're going to be with their mouth drop. Like, those Negroes are the Jews? Yes. Yes. They black? Yes. They're not red. Jewish. Jew is just one tribe. You got 11 other tribes to go. If you ain't from the tribe of Judah, you're not a Jew. You can be from the tribe of Benjamin, Levi, Issachar, all the Italian. You can be from all them different type of tribe. You ain't no Jew. But you are Israelite. You are Israelite. But he said these people are liars. Let's go to Lamentations. Yes, sir. Lamentations. I'm just trying to make sure I lay a foundation 
So we can understand that these people need to be known. Or go to your table of contents. I mean, get back with this. Nine eighty one, my book. Lamentations five. Hold on, man. We ain't got but a little strength, man. I know we're running through all these different types of battles in this, in this life. Just mm -hmm. hold on, man. Yes, sir. And be strong. Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna be pretty to get how we gonna get in the kingdom, man. Mm -hmm. It ain't gonna be pretty. Mm -hmm. You're gonna go through everything. Mm -hmm. You just gotta stay strong and have your faith in God. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you chapter five. Let's go. Let, let, let's go and see what God said about these Jewish people and how they came up with our identity. Let me tell you chapter five, verse one. Cause he said they are the sinners of God of Satan. The ones that call themselves Jews. We most definitely call ourselves Jews. Let's see how they got. Let me tell you five and one. Go ahead. Remember, O oh Lord. What has come upon us? Consider and behold our reproach. Yes, sir. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. Our houses to aliens. Wait a minute. He's talking about a set of people here. Our inheritance is turned to strangers. And our house is turned into aliens. These are not a part of the covenant. They are taking our identity. Go ahead. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. Yes, sir. We have drunk in our water for money. Our wood is sold unto us. Everything we producing, we were sold to another nation. He said we are orphans. A lot of times people calling other people, or Israelites were calling other uh, people father and mother. You know, you ain't my father and mother. You white, especially. Because we were sold in slave trade. And we were taken away from our mothers and fathers. We were orphans. Go ahead. Verse 5. Our necks are under persecution. We labor and have no rest. That don't sound like them Jews over there in the land. They got plenty of money. And they can't buy it. That's all the people buy it. They run Hollywood. Go ahead. Verse 6. We have given the hands of the Egyptians and to the Assyrians to be satisfied with bread. Yes, sir. Our fathers have sinned and are not. And we have borne their iniquities. This is what he said. He said, have given his hand to the Assyrians and the Egyptians. These are the people who are saying, these are the people who we claim to be African Americans. Because we don't know who we are. If you say you're African American, believe me, brother, you don't know who you are. Sister, you don't know who you are. These are the things that you've got to see in Scripture, especially when you're dealing with this color. Because we look like the Africans. They got kick your hair. They got dark skin. But they're not of Israel. And I'm going to show you that. Go ahead. Verse 8. Servants have ruled over us. There is none that doeth deliver us out of their hand. Is anybody ruling over the people in the land today? The Jewish people? They run it. Right. And he said in verse 2, he said, our inheritance is turned over to the strangers and the aliens. Go ahead. Verse 9. We got our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Mm, sword of the wilderness. They talk about the set of people. And Jesus said, when I bring a sword upon the land, can't nobody save you but me if I want you to. Mm. He brought a sword upon the land. We was in the land with snakes. And they beat people. It ain't just talking about a literal sword. It's the punishment of Israel. Go ahead. Verse 10. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. Wait a minute. Our skin, now we're dealing with some color, was black like an oven because of famine. I don't care how hungry a white person is, they skin can't turn black. You're right, brother. We're talking about a, we're talking about a set of people here. Mm -hmm. Those Jewish people over the land do not turn black. When they get sick, they turn whiter. Hell, exactly. These are the things that we got to know when we're dealing with these nations. Go ahead, keep reading. Verse 11. They ravished the women in Zion and the maids in the cities of Judah. That happened to one set of people. Our women got raped because our men they have no, could protect our women. Come protect them. Them Jewish folks ain't, they went through something called the Holocaust. It only lasted three years. This stuff lasted with us over 400 years and it still lasted. Exactly. Mm. Go ahead. 
Go ahead. Verse 12. Princes are hanged up by their hand. The faces of elders were not honored. Look at our elderly people today. They don't honor the old man or the old woman or whatnot. They are pushing down in the street, do all this stuff to our people. I ain't mean, gonna deal with that right now. Let's go to Genesis chapter 25. I just want to show you that color right there. Remember verse 10, that our skin was black like an other. Let's deal with some more color. Genesis chapter 25. How it all got started. How these Edomites, <coughs> you're not Edomites, <laughs> you are Edomites, or Esau, took our heritage. You gotta be careful with them words with, with um, they say the Gentiles are the Edomites. Right. Mm -hmm. Gentiles ain't no Edomites. You're right. They're not. They didn't take our identity. Those Jewish people over there, they got the blood. That's why they can trace their bloodline. I, I, our bloodline, their bloodline, kind of similar. Yes, similar. They got some of the same diseases that we got. But they taking our identity. Genesis chapter 25, verse 19. Let's see how it got started with this color. Because we got a lion counterfeit. We got a lion counterfeit. We got to spot them out. And color sometimes starts it. Verse 19, go ahead. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Yes, sir. Abraham begat Isaac. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife, the daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. These are the fathers of the covenant. Abraham, Isaac, Rebekah. Oh, they, these people are Israelites. We need to know these people. Even the women, too. Rebekah. She was chosen for Isaac. Because she was going to birth this nation, these two nations. And God showed her the plan before he showed it to Isaac. Right. Go ahead. Verse 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Because these kids was just, you know, the moon was doing, going through a whole lot of, a lot of women say morning sickness. They were going through a whole lot of stuff, but keep going. 22, and the children struggled together within her, and she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. That's a wise woman. She went to inquire of the Lord. There was a struggle going on in her body. Like, why are these kids and my son were having war against each other? We were fighting the moon, Esau and Jacob. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb, and two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels. Wait a minute. He said what? Two nations, two men of people, two different in your womb. Go ahead. Two nations are in thy womb, and two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. This is how it's supposed to be. He giving us the rundown of these two nations that play a big part in the world. But one nation is overlooked. Because he was gathered in the slave trade. He don't have much power. She don't have much power because they don't have nothing very much. Go ahead. 24. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Yes, sir. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. This is the first time we see him coming right here. He came out red. If you look at the Jewish people over the land, they are really slack. When they get it, like a lot of times, if they get uh, mad, they turn red. You see the blood rushing up, just like a white person. But this is talking about Esau, twin brother of Jacob. Two nations that's fighting still today, but one nation don't understand the fight. They fight. One nation don't care about the land. One nation said, "This is our land. We gonna take this land." But the nation it belongs to don't even understand it. Go ahead. 26. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel, and his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare, when she bare them. So why did he get a color of Jacob? <laughs> he looking like everybody else. But he said Esau red. Go ahead. 
27, and the boys grew, and Esau was a cunning hunter, a man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. Yes, sir. Esau still hunt now. He's a mighty hunt. Believe me, if he wants some money, he'll get it. The, well, they say you get in trouble. Who they go to? Go get you a Jew. He ain't saying go get a black man or African American. Go get a Jew because he got power. Go ahead. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison, but Rebecca loved Jacob. That's how Israel is a better friend, boy. Go ahead. And Jacob saw <laughs> 29. And Jacob saw pilots. And Esau came from the field and he was faint. I'm sorry. And he was faint. Yes, sir. Esau come from the field. He faint now. He found that. He faint. He home. And a lot of people like to say Jacob is a name called Tricks. He ain't trick him out of nothing. Let's see what the let's see what the contract between these two brothers was. Go ahead. Verse 30. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Called what? Edom. Edom. Very important name. That's, that's when God, Jesus said he come back and put his feet on the Mount of Olives and destroy Edom. He gonna destroy them. They are the seven gods of Satan. Those are the Jewish people. Those are our true end brothers. They in the bloodline. Go ahead. 31. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Jacob said, What? Sell me this day thy birthright. That don't sound like a tree. That sounds like a contract. Right. Go ahead. And Esau said, Behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? He didn't even want it. I'm about to die, man. I don't care about no birthright. Go ahead. And Jacob said, Swear to me this day. And he swear unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. Got to have that vow. Got that vow ain't in the mix. Guess what? It don't stand. He said, Swear to me today, you give me that birthright. He gave it to him for what? Go ahead. And then Jacob gave Esau bread and pot of lentils. And he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. He did what? He despised he his despised birthright. He despised it. His birthright. Because the eldest son is supposed to get the birthright. Meaning that everything his father had goes to the eldest son. That's right. So you can build that son up because the son is going to be the strength. Strength. And you can so forth the form if he have a son. But Esau despised it. He ain't want that part of it. Like a lot of people despise this book. They don't want them part of it. And hell is on the other side. Let's go to Genesis chapter 30, 27. Just want to give them the foundation of when this color started. He saw the red. Jacob came out. He, he didn't even say nothing about his color. He looked like his mom and daddy. Black. But it was two nations. Genesis chapter 27. Okay, let's see what happened to Esau. Cause he thought uh, he gonna eat that food and sure uh, daddy don't know nothing about this. Huh. Genesis chapter 27, we're gonna start at verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim, so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, My son. And he said unto him, Behold, here am I. Go ahead. And he said, Behold now, I am old. I know not the day of my death. He old. He said, you know not the name there was there. He about to put the blessing on this boy. Because that's what you're supposed to do according to the law. Go ahead. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison, and make me savory meat such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. That Jacob can eat, boy. Go ahead. Verse 5. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spoke to Esau, his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. So mama was that ill husband. She knew about to go down, but mama know what God told her already. She, he told her what to do. Go ahead. Verse 6. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob, her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison, and make me savory meat, that I may eat, and bless thee before the Lord, before my death. Go ahead. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice according to that which I command thee. He said, Now you obey my voice when I command you. Right. Because he was trying to follow the laws already set in place. But God said, I done told Rebekah something. She know what to do. Right. She know what to do. Go ahead. Verse 9. 
Go now to the flock and fetch me from this two good kids of the goats, and I will make them save for meat for thy father, such as he loved it. Go ahead. And thou shalt bring it to thy father that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. Did she tell him, look, you're going to get this blessing. 